Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to fetch APIs using React. So first and foremost, I've created a bare React project using NPX Create React app and opened up Visual Studio Code inside of it. So before we actually start fetching the API, I want to explain what an API is and what it does. So an API is basically a tool that sends data between a user and the app. Take it like this. Imagine that you're in a restaurant and you'd like to order food. You'd first have to contact the waiter and then tell them what you want to order. Then the waiter goes to the chef and then tell the chef what you want to eat. The chef makes what you want to eat and then the waiter brings that food to you. So how does the situation relate to how an API works? In this case, the waiter is the API and you're the user and the chef is the website or the app. You first tell the API, which is the waiter, what you want. The waiter goes to the chef or the website where it gets the data, which is the food. And then the chef gives that data back to the waiter and the waiter or the API gives you that data or the food. So if you'd like to know more about APIs, I'll leave links of videos in the description below as well. And um, the as well as the video that gave this example so that you guys could understand. So now that I've explained what an API is, I just want to uh, clear up some files and clear up the code in here so that we can begin. So I'm just going to remove uh, these top two lines and just have import react from react and then remove all of this. And then also just to remove this class name. Then I'm just going to remove app.test um, logo.svg report web vitals setup tests and then inside my index.js I'm just going to remove this report web vitals and we're good for now. So that's pretty much it for the unnecessary files part so that this doesn't get confusing and um, now we can move on to fetching the API. So now that we have cleared up the unnecessary files, we can now start talking about what API we will use for this tutorial. So there's this website called randomuser.me and this website is an open source free API for generating random user data. It's like the lorem ipsum for people. So to get started, we will go to randomuser.me slash API and as you can see, it generates random user data. So each time I refresh this page, it'll give different information. So next we need to format this JSON for better readability. So to do this, um, select all and then copy. So just copy it and then go to this uh, website called jsonformatter.curiousconcept.com and then paste uh, the JSON that we copied from here and then click process. This will format our JSON and make it much more readable. And now that we know what site we are going to be fetching data from, we can start to code. Now that we have figured out where to fetch data from, we can start to code. But before that, I will explain what API fetching is as a whole in order to clear up any confusion. API fetching is the process in which we get data from a source, whether that be a website or an app. And we return whatever data that we get to our client, which is us. So here's how it works. Our site will fetch data from another site, and once it has gathered that data, we're going to parse that data into JSON. Once we have that data into JSON, we will store that data inside of a variable, and then we can access that variable, which will give us access to the data, and that's pretty much how API fetching works. So now that I've explained to you how API fetching works, we can finally get started into coding. So first of all, I've imported two things. I've imported use effect and use state. And um, now I'm going to create a variable called URL, and that's going to be the URL that we're going to be fetching from. So I'm going to call this random user dot me slash API, and this is the URL that we're going to be fetching from. So once I've declared this variable, I'm going to create um, the hook variable, the state state variable, where we can store our response. So person data, and then set person data, and that's going to be equal to use state right there. Next, I'm going to be using the use effect to um, fetch our API. So arrow function, and, and I'm also going to be passing in the empty array at the end, just so that only this only runs once. And um, now I'm going to do fetch. And what are we going to be fetching? So we're going to be fetching this URL. So backticks dollar sign and then URL. And um, we, we're going to fetch that URL. Then, meaning once we fetch that URL, whatever result that we get back, I'm going to parse that into JSON. 
then once that once those results have been passed into JSON, whatever data that we get back, I'm going to set that person data to that data and then console.log that data that we get. So if I save it, as you can see, we have those results right here. So what I've basically done is fetch this URL, and once we've um, fetched this URL, we're going to parse the results that we get from here into JSON. And once they've been parsed, whatever data that's in the JSON, we're going to set that into this variable right here. And then I'm going to console.log that data that we um, received back. So now that I've explained to you how API fetching works and how to actually fetch an API and see the results, we can finally get started um, with displaying our results onto the page, okay? So first of all, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do if the type of data that we receive, so person data dot results is equal to undefined, meaning that um, it hasn't loaded yet, then I'm just gonna put uh, data is loading. So div, and then right there, and then I'm just going to put data is loading, okay? So in a p tag, I'm going to put data is loading, and then dot, dot, dot. And then um, what, if it's not equal to undefined, then I'm going to put a div and then put uh, data has loaded successfully. Okay. So as you can see, it says data has, has loaded successfully because it fetched this API. And once it fetched it, um, this person data value has that data that um, it fetched and if it has that data value that it fetched then it's not equal to undefined hence it puts this message right there now if I refresh it for a split second you're gonna see data is loading because whenever you see data is loading that means that it's currently fetching the API okay and whenever it's fetching the API this is going to be equal to undefined and after it's done fetching it it's gonna have a value and once it has a value it's gonna show this okay so this m means that um, this variable has a value and we want to display those values instead of just displaying data has loaded successfully. So underneath this, I'm gonna put um, the person's name. So let's do name and then uh, person data dot results. And the results is gonna return an array. So in the first index of the array, um, it's gonna have one called name, so name dot first. So it's gonna load their first name right there. And if we wanna put the last name, we're just gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna copy this and then paste that right there and then instead of having first there I'm just gonna put last right there we got the name next let's say I want to display their age so um, age person data dot results and the, since results returns an array um, I'm just gonna put in the first index uh, age or dob dot age okay so right there as you can see Keith uh, Peterson his age is 23 and uh, let's say we want to display the gender, so I'm going to do gender, and then person data dot results dot gender. So right there, gender male. So our API fetching is working perfect, perfectly fine, and we're displaying the data onto the screen. So this is pretty much it for this video. I basically showed you guys how to fetch an API, how to get the results, parse them, and then set those, set the data that we get into a variable, and then access that variable to show that data onto the screen. So this is basically how API fetching works. I hope I explained this um, pretty well. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And that's it for this video. See you next time.